Hi, hi, hi. I'm Lucius Boric, uh, drummer for and songwriter for the band Cog. Um, we've got a tour coming up, a, a bit more of an regional kind of tour, and we're we're um, we've dubbed it part two of the vinyl tour. So it's a continuation of of the first half that we did in the beginning of the year. So um, yes, here I am. Cog start the second leg of the vinyl tour on October the fourth in Victoria before hitting Byron Bay, WA for a few shows, and ending up at the Crowbar in Sydney as part of the birthday week on November twenty ninth. Mate, like there's been a bit of time between the first run and this run, so yeah, you're itching to get back out on the road. Yeah, definitely. There, there was quite a bit of a um, hoo ha with the DMs from people saying, "Well, why aren't you coming to WA, or why aren't you coming here?" and so it definitely made sense to um, when we had the, the right timing between the three of us and, and the crew and everything to, to um, kind of forge the next part of it, really. So, yeah, it, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, and you've already played some shows in South Australia, Queensland, New South Wales and ACT back in March. So how'd they go down, man? How, how were they received? Really good. It was a, it was a, a really great, um, you yeah, know, between... Between the three of us, you know, obviously it was based more around sharing space in the new normal, and it really felt. And I guess obviously with the with the people who came to the shows as well, it felt very, um, you know, almost like we were re-releasing that music to some degree, which we were because we were doing it on vinyl, yes, in that capacity. But it's just had an air about it that time. I think everyone was excited about, you know, the, romantically reminiscing about when, you know, those albums came out and we got together and. And, um, you know, created a good little vibe in the room together, you know, playing and all the rest of it. I was, and it was very similar. It had that air to it, which was, which was really good. And we don't play too much. So as much as we'd probably like, but, um, yeah, everyone seemed, you know, very, very happily, you know, stoked about what happened. And so were we, it was, it was really good fun. And are these next shows going to be more of the same or are you going to change things up a little bit? No, base it. We're still going to base it around the 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 two albums, you know, sharing space and and new normal, and probably keep a similar a similar set, which we thought ran pretty good. And you know, we didn't really get to play enough of it on the first on the first run. You know, we, I think we did eight or ten dates, so you just wanted to keep kind of playing, you know, again and 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 try to try to do the show again and again. So this gives us the opportunity to kind of play the same show again and and obviously go to different places. And so suppose that there's still one or two people out there who haven't seen Cog Live before, mate. Like, run us through a typical Cog Live show. Um, look, it's pretty – there's nothing too fancy about it, you know. We don't we, – we don't, I've never, never been one for it to be fancy bells and whistles and jumps and, you know, come on, let's mosh, you know, and all that type of stuff. It's, it's really about the music and – you know, everything else kind of adds to it. Yes, the light show adds to it. We get a bit of that going on. And, you know, sometimes we have a backdrop and bits and pieces. And But, you know, I think really we're, we're a no-thrills kind of band taking it back to just, you know, the music. We don't we, – we pretty much wear the same clothes we've always worn since, you know, back in the day. We, we You know, we don't really – we want it to be about the music. We want the experience to be about the music. Um, even to some degree, removing us, you know, like yeah, we add value and we and we play the we play the music and we're there and you can we have that interrelationship, but you know, sonically and vibrationally and and tone, you know, with the tones of the sounds and everything like that, and you know what we're doing dynamically. Hopefully, it's the music that is the show and is is more of the star than say, you know, three of us on stage or the light show or or, or the, even the venue for that case, you know. Uh, it's really about the music. So um, that's what I've always liked about certain bands. You know, yeah, they, they add the the nice stuff there to, to, I guess, you know, add a little bit more um, spice or, you know, or colour here and there. But musically, if it's not really translating and the songs aren't that good and, um, you know, when I'm at a show anyway, it doesn't matter how many bells and whistles and things like that that they have it it, it just does doesn't, doesn't move me you know what i mean so we really just try to keep it as much as possible just about the music and obviously play as passionate as we can yeah. hey, you've been doing this for a long time now bro so 
does touring life still appeal to you as much as it used to? And what sorts of things do you do to keep it interesting these days? Um, well, I still, yeah, I think just traveling in, in, you know, regardless of whether you're playing music or not, is fun to do, you know, like just exploring. So I think that's exciting, you know, and music is a bit of a vehicle for us to do that. So that never gets, you know, kind of old or stale. Um, you know, there's always seems to be new venues popping up too. Every now and again, there's new, like on the last tour, we played um, a bunch of new venues that we'd never played before. And that was, that was really cool, you know, so new environments and, um, you know, and you see how cities change and, and environments change as you, as you move around and as you tour over time. Um, you know, I guess we get to tour um, in a way that's not too bunched up. So it's not like you're doing four shows and then you know all of a sudden you've got a couple of days off and then you're back into five shows or whatever because we've got other jobs and everything as well and businesses um we try to keep it to like you know one or two shows a week just so we can really maximize those shows with you know us being in match fit as possible and um and not kind of wearing ourselves out so to speak so that you know the people get the best the best bang for their buck so to speak if you if you will and um you know, we like to have that time as 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 a band, as you know, as a group, and you know, our crew and everything to get together. It's like a good excuse to to get together and be together again and have some fun and you know, kind of hang out and um, have a few laughs and play some music. So, um, yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't get tiring for me or it doesn't get boring or anything like that. Yes, it would be nice to go to a few more places, maybe overseas, um, but that's obviously a financial thing that we just can't achieve you know so we, we just keep it local as best as we can and um yeah you know drive it home as best as we can now as you mentioned before the the vinyl tour as the name suggests is celebrating the release on vinyl for the first time ever of sharing space in the new normal so did the fans react to the vinyl as well as you thought they would a lot of great feedback yeah and and a couple not too good feedback um mm -hmm. So it was definitely more in the percentage of positive than negative, but the negative was more just some of the, unfortunately, when you, when you try to, um, you know, produce these types of organic physical products, there can be times where some things, you know, just don't meet the mark. You might get a bump or a, you know, a song does it, it kind of you know, skips a track or, or something like that, you know, cause you're pressing and you're cutting vinyl, which is, which is pretty standard, which is, you know, gone out you know obviously over the ages with vinyl there's they, they get, you can have some problems you know um so you know we, we tried our best to amend those and and make sure that people obviously you know because they've they've obviously paid up front they finally got there because we had a, a a real quite a hard time actually trying to trying to get the vinyl it was supposed to supposed to be done in the czech republic first that pin got pulled so then everything had to be reverted back to melbourne and we still wanted to make sure that the quality was going to be there and all the rest of it so we had to do testing and it just took a lot longer than we thought um, um but we still had some anomalies that were a little bit you know funky here and there and um but overall everyone was really really stoked and and um you know but that's part of that process you know just just trying to physically get that product to a point where it's 100 percent. you know not all of them are going to I kind of um kind of breached the mark but yes the majority did pretty much 90 percent you know did so that's good and is there any left if people still want to get their hands on or did they sell out um I, look i only think there's a few left yeah there's not there's not many so you know i don't know if we'll ever press any again um so well not in this format anyway if we go to press some more it might be more in a you know a, a different you know because this time we we really you know it was 180 grams it was you know the artwork is uh on the albums you know we made sure there was kind of color and variety which was cool um but we might just go back to maybe a, a, a typical black and and that type of thing next time um but there's only yeah i, I don't think there's many left you know um at the at the at this point so yeah you definitely want to kind of jump in we'll be selling them on the on the run of the shows on the on the vinyl tour so you know if you're there and you, you want to pick one up at the show that, that they'll be there for sure oh, and speaking of that tour bro like i know sydney's sold out but there's still a few tickets left for the other shows so where do people go to get themselves a ticket 
definitely go on to cog.com.au, so our website, and like sign up to the newsletter. That's super important. Put your email in there because we communicate through there as well. But we've got all the links on the site, the homepage. As soon as you hit the homepage, you'll see a link to our uh, OzTix. Um, you know, you can go to our Instagram. We've got a link tree in there. We've got links. We're always throwing the links in, so it's not not too hard to find. But yeah, OzTix, and then you'd put Cog in, and that would that should bring up the vinyl tour. Right. Now, I'm not going to ask you if you've got any new material coming out because I always get the same stand answer from you. But what I am going to ask is, will you be playing any new songs at these shows? No. Oh, that pretty much. <laughs> another one there too. I'm glad I didn't ask. <laughs> Now, before we leave, just quickly, we've started a new thing up where we um go through your old photos and we dig a couple out and we ask you to sort of give us a bit of an explanation about them. So, okay, I found this one from your kit. What like a rat in a brat? Yeah, like a, it was the same, like a rat in a bread tin. Yeah. What okay, about? so that so you want an explanation for that? Yes. Hang on, let me just get my put my goggles on real quick. Hang on. <laughs> Yes, like a rat in a bread tin. So that was done by my drum tech, Roger, and he surprised me. So I walked out and, you know, maybe it might have been – I don't know why he chose that phrase, um, but we I think it was going around in the, you know, the cog camp like a rat in a bread tin for some reason. We were saying that quite a, quite a bit. And he put it on my drums and I walked out there to play the show and, and, and that was – was that was on there but he got the idea because in the the film clip run when we did the film clip run and a response to the three imbeciles that were kind of um politically putting together the campaign during 9 11 um i wrote bush howard and blair fuck off on my drums back <laughs> in the day so he kind of copied it but it wasn't it's not as good as as the one i originally did that was for sure but still the right intention good intention there from uh, from rog you have one more for you mate but i know you're strapped for time so i won't worry about showing you this time but on the next one i'll get you around on the next next run around all right sure thanks for your time lucius always a pleasure speaking with you my friend the tour does kick off thanks chris I was actually going to, when I was doing the research, I was going to say, why the fuck day Queensland show? And then I realized that you've already been here. So I'll have to catch you next time. That's, that's, that's <laughs> right. You know, you never know. There might be a sneaky one that might pop in here and there, you know. So we're, we're always kind of waiting for something to pop up um, if, it's, if, it makes, if it makes sense. So you never know. Keep me posted, brother. And you take care. We'll catch up with you shortly. Thanks, mate. Good to see you. Take care. Bye.